Okay, the machine did a complete surface refinish in the fast speed. Now we're gonna take a look at doing a final cut with a slow speed, uh, which gives us a real good finish. So at this point, I'm gonna run this all the way back in again. And again, it's just slightly rubbing against that. Gonna bring that all the way in. Again, watching out at the end. Again, I'm turning this knob right here. And, but I have to watch this as I get close to what they call the hat of the rotor to make sure that I don't hit that. Okay, so I need to slow down right when I get to the end of this area where the pads rub. Okay, so that's good right there. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial in uh, another five thousandths on our equipment. So I'm gonna dial in one, two, and five right there. So it's half of a line. Same thing on this side, I'm gonna unlock this and dial in uh, one, two, five right there and lock it in. Okay, these are both tight. And this time I'm gonna lift this up and move it to the slow speed and let it cut that surface. And that gives it a very fine finish that your brake pads will enjoy rubbing against. Won't wear the pads out. Now the problem now is look how slow this thing is moving. Okay, this, this step takes about five minutes to complete. So you don't have to necessarily babysit it as it's doing it, uh, but most technicians at this point aren't gonna just stand here and watch this thing. They're gonna be working on the car, maybe getting the car ready for something. Uh, in the shop though, we really need somebody to monitor this in case something goes wrong. So you don't wanna necessarily like go outside and leave it alone at that point. But in reality, most shops, the guy's gonna walk away and work on something. Uh, make sure nobody's touching it while it's cutting. And you can see what it's doing here. It's making a really fine cut. And it takes a while because the, uh, it's on a slow, slow mode right now. But you'll see what great surface we have when we're done. The only dilemma was, like we said, the rotor's too thin to use. So we weren't able to really use this rotor. But for demonstration purposes, that would be good. Uh, if we come over here, I uh, just wanted to show you one other rotor while that's cutting. Uh, this one's a lot thinner than the one we're cutting. It has no fins. That's because this rotor is off of a, a rear brake instead of a front brake. And um, what we basically have is a rotor that is a lot thinner. Here's the minimum thickness. We've got 8.5 millimeters for a minimum thickness. So my helper here, he's gonna divide for me. You have your phone with you? <laughs> we're gonna do, uh, we just wanna see what the minimum thickness is like we showed you before. So we're gonna take our uh, 8.5 millimeters. We're gonna divide 25.4 into that. Uh, 25.4, yep. And that's inches and that's gonna equal, the converted number would be 0.3, three, uh, rounding up would be five inches. So basically this rotor, if it's thinner than 0.335 inches, that would be too thin to use. So what we can do is we'll um, stand the rotor up and use the micrometer. Now, because this one is measuring anywhere from zero to one inch, we can use the same micrometer again, because this one's a uh, zero to one inch micrometer. And uh, we can basically just tighten it up around the outside of the rotor. Yeah, so we're gonna just tighten this up around the outside. Again, I'm using the, the part on the end, which is kind of the ratcheting mechanism, so you don't over tighten it around the rotor. So when it starts doing that, that's basically it right there. If I tighten it here, I can actually tighten it so tight it'll spread the tool open. And that's really not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the size of the rotor, not use it as like a C-clamp or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna lock it in. The way I did that is I just moved this little lever over. That like locks it in place. Usually you can wiggle the, the micrometer off. And if we look at the, uh, the scale on here again, here, let me put this down here and I'll 
I'll be able to focus in on that. Uh, let's just read the numbers real quick. Again, we'll add some numbers together. Uh, because this is a zero to one inch micrometer, uh, like we did before, if you guys remember, we had zero as our first number, because this is a zero to one inch micrometer. If it was a one inch micrometer, one to two inch, we would put 1.00 instead for that first number. Uh, if you look, you can see the three. So what we would do here, if we want to add some numbers together, is we'll put our uh, 0 0.000 as our first number, because that's a zero to one inch micrometer. We got 0 0.300 as our second number. And if you look closely, you can see that there's actually two lines after the three. And that would represent 50 thousandths, because there's two lines. Each one's 25 thousandths. 0 0.050. And then the last number we need is, again, looking at this horizontal line and looking at this scale right here, it looks like we're at just about 11 just short of 11, so we'll call it 11, 0.011. Okay, so we got one, six, three. Okay, so that's our, our measured reading. Compared to our minimum specification, that's a good rotor because you could take 3.361, 0 0.361 and subtract 0.335, so if we uh, subtract those two, we'll have two here. Basically, we have 26 thousandths of an inch of material we could remove from the rotor and still be okay. Now, it is getting close because generally you want to add a little extra. You don't want to cut the rotor all the way down to the minimum. So this rotor, if it only had to have like a real fine amount of material shaved off, we could actually do that. Uh, but if you're going to get, if you're going to cut it all the way down to the minimum, you're going to need a new rotor. There's no material left on the rotor now for wear as the pads wear into the rotor. So that rotor would be questionable. Right now it's about halfway done. And uh, you, you can see what the finish looks like. Both sides. We have a nice mirror-like finish, which you'll see when it's completely finished to the end. Um, we are going to try to show you in the future, uh, this is another machine that we have in the shop. Now, this one's set up to do uh, brake drums. So if we want to cut a brake drum, if you look on the inside of the brake drum, Okay, this surface right here that you see is the surface that we have to machine. This is the surface that gets scored up and that's where the brake shoes rub against when you're braking. Uh, so this surface here, if it has like rust in it, like this has it, and this surface isn't so like a mirror finish, uh, what we can do is mount it on this machine. Uh, this machine here has one cutting tip right here. Uh, so you're gonna actually set it up similar to what we did with the, um, the rotor. You're gonna have to find a cone that's gonna fit in the middle of the, uh, the drum, which this one fits right in the center. Uh, we're gonna need that spring that's being used on our other machines. So this has a different type of adapter. This, uh, this is what you're gonna use in between the drum. So this would fit on here with the spring on it just to show you how it's set up. Uh, so the drum would go on after that. And then ultimately, uh, you would sandwich it with another one of these on the other side. And then you'd have to, again, put some spacers on here and tighten them that up. Once that's all kind of in position, yeah, it's not gonna center itself. Uh, you can see how this cutting tip is going to work. It will actually, uh, we're going to go through this in another video so you can actually see it operate, but you can actually cut the inside of the drum with that cutting dip using a similar type tool as our 
rotor cutting machine. So I just wanted to show you that setup there. Let's take a look back at our rotor and see how it's doing. Okay, it's about almost almost done. We have a little more area uh, to look at. Let's show you what a brand new rotor looks like coming out of the box. So one of the things that you can do if your rotor is bad is you'd have to replace it with a new rotor. Uh, the problem with the new rotor is they put oil on it. So when you buy a new rotor, um, you need to clean it with some brake clean so your pads don't slip on there. And they put a special hatch, like cross hatch pattern on here to help the brake pads break in. So that would be from the factory. That's what your surface looks like. And again, there should be some kind of specifications on here. Uh, sometimes they print it on the inside. Sometimes it's on the edge. Let me just see if we have any, anything here. Uh, sometimes it's on the edge of this part. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we can flip that. Yeah, let's flip that around. All right, so you can see this one is uh, minimum thickness is 24.5 millimeters. And again, we would convert that to inches and then we could use the uh, micrometer. So this is just under one inch, 25.4 is one inch. So we would use the zero to one inch micrometer on there. But I'm sure if we took a micrometer to that now, if you want to bring it over here for a minute, it's probably a lot bigger than the minimum, I hope, <laughs> because it hasn't been used yet. But if you take uh, the micrometer and put it around the outside, Let's just see what this is measuring brand new. It's probably going to be off our scale, but let's see where we're at here. No, nope, no, we're good. Okay, so I'm just tightening this up around here. Um, it's actually a little bigger than our scale, but uh, it's over the zero here. So if you look right here, you'll see the zero. That's one inch. Actually, in this case, it'd be two inches. <laughs> so we're at, um, no, actually one inch. That would be exactly one inch there. Uh, it looks like we're about one inch and then there would be one line after that if there was actually a line because I could tell by this part. So we're actually at like 1.025. So that's good. So you have a lot of material on here. So as the pads wear into your rotor, uh, it doesn't get to minimum too quick. You have a lot of extra material here. Uh, so how much would the rotors? 35 bucks. $35. So that's why a lot of shops don't even cut rotors anymore. This machine that we're using is like $5,000. So you'd have to cut a lot of rotors to make up for the difference. Uh, but if you look at the surface now, this is the surface that we just cut. This is a usable surface now that we could use on our two brake heads. Um, so at this point, you would want to... Um, Usually what I do is I take some sandpaper, which I will show you, and just kind of lightly touch the outside of each side of the rotor just to clean it up a little. Uh, but this feels really good right now. Um, and then you'd have to disassemble anything. Final step would be to clean the machine because you can see there's metal filings all over the place on this thing. So we have a vacuum that we would suck all the uh, the filings off for the next person that's going to use it. All right, so that's basically it for servicing the rotor uh, if you want to machine it off the car. And again, in the future, we may have an on-the-car brake laid to show you.